Jean and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight we're treading into unchartered territory. I hate ground turkey, but I'm going to make this delicious spiral turkey and stuffing meatloaf. I know you can't see the spiral yet, but you will, I promise. This actually may have converted me to a turkey meatloaf. Let's go see how we make this delicious turkey and stuffing spiral meatloaf. we're going to go over all of the ingredients and then we're going to go into this two-step process of making this spiral turkey and stuffing loaf. Make a turkey meatloaf? We need some ground turkey. I have two pounds of ground turkey and we're going to season this up with a teaspoon of my homemade poultry seasoning, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of black pepper, and a uh, two teaspoons of sedged spice chicken seasoning. You can use whatever chicken seasoning you like. So that's for the meatloaf. Also, we have a cup and a half of breadcrumb. These are just seasoned breadcrumb. Two eggs and probably not this much, but I have about three quarters of a cup of milk. I don't know that I'm going to need that much. We're going to also make this stuffing to go inside. So we have about four to six cups of bread cubes. Now I did purchase these, so this is one bag of country style stuffing cubes. And I'm going to use one medium onion, chopped, four cloves of garlic, a half a cup of carrots, minced, four stalks of celery, chopped. I have a half a stick of butter, and I have in here one, there's two teaspoons of poultry seasoning, one teaspoon of chicken seasoning, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a teaspoon of cracked black pepper. And then we're also going to sweat off a pound of cremini mushrooms. This is going to give the meatloaf moisture. It's going to give it substance, and all of these vegetables are going to give the stuffing a really nice flavor. We also have four cups of chicken stock. We may or may not use all of that in the stuffing. We'll know that when we get to that point. So I'm going to clear, and we'll come back, and I'm going to mix up the meatloaf mixture, and then we're going to go over to the stove and make our stuffing. Okay. We're going to go ahead and mix up our meatloaf. This is just like mixing up any other meatloaf. Now, for those of you who've been with me any length of time, you will know that you've heard me say, I do not like ground turkey. And that is no lie. But I think that what I've decided is that maybe it's not the ground turkey itself. It's the fact that everybody tries to use it as a substitute for ground beef. That is my problem. So I thought maybe... If I just made the meatloaf taste like uh, a turkey dinner, then I might actually enjoy that. So we're going to give it a try. I'm just going to start mixing all of this up in here. Now, I always add milk to my meatloaf mixture because when I use dry breadcrumb, it adds moisture back so it's not taking it out of the meat. And since turkey's already dry, then we don't want it to be extra dry because we put too many breadcrumbs in there or we put dry breadcrumbs in there in the first place. Plus, my breadcrumbs are a mixture of regular breadcrumbs and panko because I had two open containers and I just combined them together. So that is why that is the way it is. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and continue mixing this and then we're going to set it aside and I'll meet you over at the stove and we're going to go ahead and make our stuffing. Right, we're just going to go ahead and saute off of our all, all of our vegetables. I melted the four tablespoons of butter in the pan. And now I've just added the um, onions, carrots, and celery. I have this over a medium-high heat. I'm also going to go ahead and add the mushrooms. And I'm just going to add everything all in together. We're going to let everything here sweat until the mushrooms cook down. All their liquid is evaporated. And we have a nice cohesive vegetable mixture. And these are all cooked. This took about 15 minutes in total for everything to soften up, cook down, and for all the liquid to absorb. I didn't want any of the liquid in there. I want all this concentrated flavor because we're going to be adding stock into the pan. Now I want to add my bread cubes and I want to give this a good toss. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add 
I'm going to add about two cups of this, four cups of stock, and I'm going to give it a good stir. That goes another cup, so we have a total of three cups of liquid in here. I still have the heat on, and it's over a medium heat. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to turn the heat off. I'm going to let it sit and absorb. And then we're going to go over to the counter, and we're going to show you what we did with the meat mixture. What happens with the meat mixture is I have taken a sheet pan and I've lined it with a sheet of parchment and I took my turkey meatloaf mixture and I patted it into the pan. I have about a half of an inch thickness of the meat mixture as evenly as possible and in a rudimentary rectangle, okay? All right, we're going to, I went ahead and before I jump ahead. I went ahead and I spread out some of my stuffing again about a half inch in thickness but I kept it inside of the meat layer because we don't want it to extend to the edges otherwise it's going to squish out and we don't want to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this parchment paper to assist us in rolling this bad boy up. Now you're going to just go ahead and you'll form it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it this way just so I can get a little bit of a, a hold on it. I'm just going to kind of form the ends into itself. Okay, I flipped this down onto a clean sheet of parchment. I have tucked the ends in and I'm just giving it a nice little pat so that it'll tighten up in all of those places. Now, I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. We are gonna go ahead and we're gonna cook this for about an hour. That's a big honking piece of meat. So we wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way. The best way to do that is to use a meat thermometer. When the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees, then we'll take it out of the oven. So let's put it on in there. We'll be back when it's time to take it out. Right. Our meatloaf is ready to come out of the oven. I did take its internal temperature. And I don't know about you, but I think that looks really incredible. It smells incredible, It too. does smell really amazing. It smells like Thanksgiving in here, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. We are going to allow this to sit for 10 minutes while I make some gravy and heat up a vegetable. And then we'll be back and we'll fix your plate of delicious turkey and stuffing spiral meatloaf. There you have it. Delicious turkey and stuffing spiral meatloaf. We have our little stuffing muffins off to the side and some mixture of green and wax beans. Now I know that you can't see the spiral inside because I went and put gravy on it, but there you go. That's what the meatloaf looks like on its ugly tray. Um, do you want to taste this, honey? Okay. The outside is crispy. You can regulate that if you like. You can cover that with uh, some foil. Good? really good. Is it? <laughs> you sound surprised. You always sound oh, surprised. Yeah, better than I thought I'd be. <laughs> I'm really tasting. Mm -hmm. Tastes like a meatloaf, but it's got that Thanksgiving kind of Thanksgiving meat. thing going on. It's really, really good. So, I hope you give this turkey and stuffing spiral meatloaf a try. I think that you're going to really like it. If you're one of those I don't like ground turkey people like I am, I think that you should give this a try because I think you might like this. So I hope you try it and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you like what you watched today and I hope that you try it and I hope that you love it. Uh, if you like what you saw, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and giving me a positive rating. And also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you're already not a subscriber so that you don't miss out on any of the fun we have here in our kitchen every single day. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to come by tomorrow. Until next time, happy eating!